Welcome yeah. to the NWAETC Project ECHO. I'm Kent Unruh. I'd like to turn it over to our medical director, Dr. Brian Wood, to introduce our guest. Great. Well, Dr. Udell Flores is our uh, local uh, psychiatrist here on the panel, and she's one of our local experts who should be very familiar to the ECHO community, so I don't think she needs a huge introduction. She's going to talk today about club drugs, and I will turn it over to her. Hi. Uh, thank you so much, Brian. Um, so what do club drugs have to do with HIV? <laughs> I think some of us know already, but let's, um, there's also new club drugs, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Some of the old club drugs, what um, the problems with them and why they impact our HIV community so much, and then talk about some of the new um, club drugs coming down the pike, um, brand new research chemicals and bath crystals and all these interesting new names that uh, we should be aware of um, um, because of our patient population. Um, so, who uses club drugs? Um, well, there's, there seems to be two populations. Um, um, for example, um, there's our um, gay male um, population that goes to circuit parties and dance clubs and, and, and sex type parties um, where they um, oftentimes use multiple different types of, of sex drugs, I mean of club drugs in order to do things such as have sexual marathons um, to um, decrease um, uh, inhibitions, to increase um, staying power, so to speak, and, um, and also to, to um, heighten um, sexual sensitivity. Um, and so um, a survey of gay male circuit party attenders in San Francisco, for example, they surveyed them looking at what drugs they did use, and about 80% would use ecstasy, um, two-thirds would use ketamine, 43% um, methamphetamine, as you can see here, about 30% GHB, and Viagra and um, poppers or amyl nitrate were also um, very popular, and, and about half of them used four plus drugs um, during um, one of these circuit parties, which can last um, two to three days at a time. Um, the other um, um, study, the other group of people who often use club drugs are um, younger people, rave attenders who go to all night dance parties and things like that. And they also um, use club drugs oftentimes. About half of them use club drugs. And these people tend to use slightly different club drugs, and they have different reasons for using the club drugs. For example, they want to become one with the party. They want to dance more. They want to um, stay up later. They and and they want to have a, a, an experience and sort of a um, empathogenetic experience um, um, with their drugs. And they oftentimes, about half of them will use LSD. Um, um, I mean, I'm sorry, about 30% will use LSD, 30% ecstasy, um, less methamphetamine, but that is 8.5%. Uh, and um, they also use club drugs um, with things like marijuana and alcohol and c cocaine. So, um, like I mentioned, um, club drugs tend to decrease inhibition, they impair judgment, um, they increase sexual endurance and increase sexual risk taking. This is what happens when people are using club drugs, and it happens among both MSM as well as heterosexual populations. So um, the sexual risk taking um, increases among club drug users, and there's high rates among the from among MSM club drug users, there's high rates of unprotected anal intercourse, high numbers of partners um, with unknown HIV status, and of course we all know that that's the that's um, the setting of um, of um, HIV. <laughs> and um, among heterosexual um, methamphetamine users, there was one survey um, where they. Um, um, they investigated just um, why they used uh, methamphetamine and what their sexual activity was like. And these were um, about 90% were male. Um, they were young um, uh, methamphetamine users um, who would use methamphetamine on a regular basis um, almost every other day, for example. And um, they would report um, an average 
and the standard deviation was like 22, but an average of 9.4 sex partners over a two-month period, they would have, um, all of them had vaginal sex, and um, there was like an average of 21 unprotected um, vaginal sex acts, um, an average of 6.3 anal sex, again, unprotected, and, and 40 42% unprotected oral sex. So it's it's very common as well. They they call them marathon sex parties. Um, and that's um, what most users, um, heterosexual users, will use it for as well in these situations. Um, about 37% um, also report using um, injecting, and almost half of them had shared or borrowed needles. So again, this is another... Um, ripe situation for developing um, an HIV infection. <clears throat> now, we have the old club drugs and we have some newer club drugs. And the old club drugs are methamphetamine, ecstasy, LSD, GHB, poppers, cocaine, ketamine, Viagra, and rohypnol. Um, um, GHB and rohypnol are commonly known as date rate drugs because they're depressants. Um, people will take them and, and um, develop a retrograde amnesia. Um, and um, oftentimes um, they um, will be um, um, taken advantage of in those cases. Now, the newer club drugs that are coming out that you can find on the Internet are the designer drugs and the research chemicals. And uh, what a designer drug is, it's uh, a group of legal or illegal produced substances that are structurally and pharmacologically similar to an illicit substance such as amphetamines, ecstasy, or LSD, or even um, ketamine. And so some of the um, common ones that we've heard about that we see out there right now um, are spice, which is also called K2 or incense, and then the bath salts, the famous bath salts, which are also known as plant food and research chemicals. Um, then there's some other um, drugs that are out there, um, like salvia, which is salvia divinorum, um, magic mint or diviner sage. It's still common and legal in most states. And, and, um, but that's not used very often in the club drug situation. I think it's important to know about because it's getting very popular. And then, of course, there's um, Kratom, um, which is still legal in um, most countries, in fact. And um, it's something that our um, opiate-dependent prescription drug patients with chronic pain are ordering on the Internet um, to help them detox from, from um, opiates. However, Kratom also is, um, produces dependence and withdrawal syndrome, so we should be aware of that. And I just will speak a little bit about that as well. <coughs> um, so spice, what is spice or herbal incense? And these are synthetic cannabinoids. They were designed by um, pharmaceutical companies to use in research um, on um, researching the um, the cannabinoid receptor. And so some of them are, are very strong. They're um, they're much more potent agonists than THC, for example. Um, and um, they're sold oftentimes in head shops, smoke shops, and on the internet under the disguise of incense, air fresheners, herbal blends. The key thing, and this is the, this is the buzz sort of, you know, the package labels indicate not for human consumption, which of course means this is what you used to get high with. <laughs> and um, um, so, and the reasons that people want to use this is that, you know, it's, it's legal in a lot of different places still. So um, it's um, easy to get via the Internet. You don't have to go down to CD areas and buy it, for example. It's all you need is a credit card and, and an Internet connection. Um, and it's non-detected in drug testing. And that's another real uh, popular reason for its popularity. We find that people who are in drug court, um, people who are um, being monitored um, by corrections officers and have to give um, urine samples. Um, it, since it's harder to detect, you have to use specific testing to, to see this. And so um, people, those types of populations are using this a lot. So recently, of course, um, um, they have been um, controlled now. Just recently, July of 2012, Finally, um, the DEA has put them as um, Schedule One drugs, 
and um, so um, their popularity hopefully will decrease. Um, let's see, I'm talking about, these are some of the names um, of the cannabinoid um, compounds. So there's CP47, HU210, JWH018, and O73. JWH018 apparently causes psychosis in quite a few people, particularly those who have psychotic disorders. About 50% of them um, seem to develop psychotic reactions to this. I think it's because um, these um, research chemicals are powerful, like I said, more powerful than THC. We don't really, they're not well characterized um, yet, um, but um, they appear to be more likely, far more likely than marijuana to cause a psychotic reaction in our, in our patients. Um, so we should suspect it if a patient presents with signs and symptoms consistent with cannabis use, if they have negative routine urine toxicology screens, for example, Harborview's toxicology screens wouldn't show it, probably not even with a GCMS, but I'm not sure about that. Um, they are developing GCMS toxicology to test for it now, however. And, and when they're in a situation when their urine is being monitored, and then they present with otherwise unexplained sudden onset psychosis. So we should be um, um, familiar with this and, um, and have a high index of suspicion in those cases. Um, now, bath crystals, plant food. Um, again, they're sold at head shops and via the internet. The cost is, is about $25 to $50 per 50 milligrams, which um, I think the, probably the average amount of milligrams that someone would take would be 10 to 20 milligrams in, to get high. Again, the packaging um, says not for human consumption, which is, of course, meaning that it's for, for use. <laughs> and that's specifically written to evade authorities and avoid regulation. And they have, um, of course, these bath salts have these um, fabulous names such as um, Purple Wave or Snow Leopard or Vanilla Sky, and that's another hint that these bath salts might not be for using, or not Epsom salts <laughs> or anything <laughs> like that. And so anyways, the DEA placed two of the three drugs in um, bath salts under, and the um, synthetic cannabinoids under Schedule 1 in July. So what are the... Um, um, bath crystals, <coughs> actually these bath salts are, are cathinone, cathinone um, substitute cathinones, okay, and cathinone <coughs> is an alkaloid, a phenylethylamine alkaloid found in Catha edulis, which is the cot um, plant that's found in the Horn of Africa, um, and so um, these uh, substituted cathinones um, are, um, um, they are amphetamine-like, um, they're very serotonergic-like, too. So they actually cause reuptake inhibition of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, and it also promotes release of, of those three um, monoamines. Um, so these substituted cathinones are all very pharmacologically similar to methamphetamine and ecstasy, or ecstasy, and um, they produce similar adverse effects. Um, so mephedrone, methylone, and methylene dioxypyrovalerone, or MDPV, are the three most common active ingredients contained in bath crystals or bath salts. Um, clinical effects, I'm going to go over this really briefly because we're running out of time. Um, but it, it looks like methamphetamine intoxication or MDMA intoxication, so tachycardia, hypertension, loss of appetite. They have what's called methedrone sweat, for example, and you see people with serotonin syndrome, and you see them trismus with bruxism, um, hypertension, and tremor. Um, these are serotonergic drugs, and um, they're metabolized 2D6, so 2D6 inhibitors will increase, um, I mean, will decrease the metabolism of these drugs, and you're, they're going to be more likely to have serotonin syndrome. So, of course, our TD, 2D6 inhibitors you know, ritonavir is one, of course, that it's important for our patients. And also, um, um, Paxil and Prozac are 2D6 inhibitors. So we worry about people taking antidepressants who also might be using these club drugs. There's a t acute toxicity reports of CNS hyperstimulation, 
cardiovascular compromise and serotonin syndrome. And there's also paranoia, hallucinations, and delusions. In fact, these are as likely as methamphetamine to cause um, um, psychotic reactions, hallucinations, and paranoia. And they may be more likely. We don't know yet because there's not too much information on these drugs. And a lot of it is um, experiential information um, um, reported by users and case reports in emergency rooms. But there is definitely high and frequent use and craving intolerance, much like for any other amphetamine type drug. Here's another one, MDPV or MDVP, who's um, very similar as well. Um, methalone, again, very similar. You should know that these drugs are sold in powder form, um, also liquid and tablet form. They can be dissolved and injected. They can be um, used rectally as well as orally, and they're snorted. Um, and um, <clears throat> they all have pretty similar um, psychiatric and um, physical and CNS effects. Um, here, there's a whole bunch of other ones out there that are coming down the pike. So as soon as two of them are placed under, um, under um, DEA, you know, Schedule 1, there's all these other ones coming out by, from these underground chemists and labs, often which are in Europe, Australia, a lot in China now. And so here's some of the other ones that are coming there. There's methadrone, flith Fedrone, 4-MEC, um, NDAI, and Butylone, and, and there's going to be umpteen and others um, that are all getting popular. So as soon as one is scheduled, another one comes down. Um, here's interesting. This is methoxetamine. This is still legal. It's, so it's a legal high, as they call them. This is an NMDA antagonist, and it's an analog of ketamine. Ketamine is a very popular club drug among the... the <coughs> Our MSM crowds, and um, this is very popular in the United in the United Kingdom right now via internet sales, and it's very similar to PCP intoxication. Um, so you'll see nystagmus and stupor, and um, it's not detectable via GCMS, and you need um, IV fluid resuscitation and benzos for agitation and respiratory support, of course, to to treat this when you see it. Um, now, this is the paparazine derivatives, okay, right? So an anti-helminthic with stimulant properties are these derivatives. BZP is the most common one, which was recently placed under control in New Zealand because it's very popular in New Zealand. And young adults, especially club drugs, people, young males, and it's called legal ecstasy. Um, and so it's seen in Europe and New Zealand. Um, and again, it's used for amphetamine stimulant-like effects. And my understanding is that there's actually some research on these paparazine derivatives because of their antiviral properties. Um, so I know, I mean, certainly it's, it's, it's out there, and, um, and that's another thing we need to worry about. Um, salvia. Talk about salvia, diviner sage is still, it's still legal in most states here. It's a hallucinogenic herb from Mexico, Oaxaca, the Mistec Indians use it apparently. Um, people here smoke it and it's got potent hallucinogenic effects. I find it interesting from a, uh, from, from a, um, addiction medicine perspective because it's a kappa opioid agonist. And I, I mean, you know, this is the first I've heard of that being a hallucinogen. So it's really interesting from that perspective. Um, and it does have very potent hallucinogenic effects. Um, it's not serotonergic at all, but it causes sedation, analgesia, and depression. It's not detected again um, by usual standard immunoassays, but we can detect it using GCMS. <laughs> And it's, it's, it's not that dangerous, but people are using it a lot, and they're advertising it as this spiritual high so on the Internet. And, and people are buying and selling it and, and, and using it a lot. Here's the last slide. This is the Kratom. It's a medicinal herb indigenous to Southeast Asia. It has agonist activity at the mu and kappa opioid receptors. Um, efficacy is poorly understood. It is illegal in Southeast Asia and Australia, but it's legal still in Europe and, and the USA, and it's easily available via the Internet. Dependence is reported um, with withdrawal symptoms as well. Americans are purchasing it to self-manage opioid withdrawal. 
And there's also Krypton available, which is powdered kratom leaves and um, O-desmethyl tramadol, an active metabolite of tramadol with it. And people are buying this also for detox. So that's the end. Any questions?